Hello everybody, it's Monday, so we start a new week and as usual if it's Monday it's our eShop day, so we are we we'll continue to to build out our domain for, for the eShop that you want to build with uh, .NET and Blazor. As you might know if you already watched the first part of, uh, of this stream, we will be using uh, the Blazor WebAssembly for the client, so this means that we will have also to build an API layer at a certain point, but we also want to follow uh, as much as possible the domain driven design principles. So that's why we started last time out by, um, well, starting to create our domain. And we started with a shared kernel where we placed some base classes. And uh, well, the most important are uh, the base class for entity, which represents an entity according to domain driven design. And then we have a base class for value object that represents a value object according to domain driven design. And last but not least, something that uh, I like to always use is a custom enumeration class that I would like to use instead of the default C sharp enums. Uh, there are different reasons why I like that, but um, I also have a video on YouTube where I explain why I, I actually like to have these custom enumeration classes. Mostly because you can actually add behavior to your enumeration, this being a class. Okay, so yeah, that being said, I would say that we should continue. First of all, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, as always, please, uh, please feel free and welcome to post any questions or messages or thoughts or ideas, whatever. Please feel free to post them in the chat. That's, that's why the chat is there both on YouTube and on Twitch. So no matter where you are watching right now, you have the possibility to really get in touch with me. And I would really like to, to have a discussion going regarding different things uh, that we do here. I'm also open for, for ideas. And actually, one of the problems that we had last time out was that, uh, well, if you want to build something with domain-driven design, the first and very, very important thing that, uh, that well, you have to think about is actually, uh, well, you need a domain expert. But of course, since uh, we are here, uh, only me and you, we don't have a real domain expert that, uh, well, th there's not a company behind for which we are actually building an eShop right now. So we just want to build it. Uh, just just to learn, to get accustomed to it, uh, with the domain driven design principles. And of course with Blazor, uh, just a little bit later. So we don't have a domain expert here. So we, we kind of have to, to improvise. And last time out we were working, uh, we have this, uh, pro, this uh, is called the catalog bounded context. And in this catalog bounded context, we have created a product. And the product uh, has this type of, uh, of information, like uh, these are only the properties. So we, we haven't implemented any behavior yet, but I guess we'll come to this today. So we have your name, description, price, photo URL, available stock. Uh, and minimum stock threshold. Though I'm not sure if these two properties are really okay for a product in the catalog bounded context, that would probably uh, be more suitable for the inventory bounded context, for which we have created a solution folder. That's how I like to organize my, my applications. But uh, this solution folder is uh, is empty for now, but we'll, we surely get to, to implement the inventory uh, at some point. So yeah, then the category, uh, it has also a list of, or well, an I collection of sub uh, subcategory. A subcategory is mostly uh, or essentially uh, the same more or less conceptually as a category, but it has a parent category. So we provide here the GUID of, of the parent. And then we have the factories for this and uh, then we have the change description and change, uh, change uh, category name. And uh, yeah, that, that's actually uh, for now, at least, our, our product. But there is uh, one thing that uh, I thought about is, of course, we'll also want to implement the front end at a certain point. So I was thinking, instead of just guessing or trying to find out exactly what we actually need in our domain model, 
I have actually looked for a team, for an eShop team, and I found uh, this team. I, I didn't buy it already, but I guess I'll buy it when, when we'll get to implement the front-end part. But the reason why I wanted to show you this team right now is that we have here basically all the functionalities that we actually want to have in our eShop. Uh, because if we go here to pages, we see that we, see that we have, well, the, the home page. We have two different versions for, for home pages, but that's really not, not really important from the functionality for, from the domain perspective, because the home is usually an aggregation of different type of information. So uh, in, this, uh, in this regard, now we'll also don't implement blog posts right now, but uh, we have here this shop one, shop two, shop three, and this basically represents our catalog, which is actually a list of products. Uh, well, the catalog itself is not very, very complicated, and this is uh, something that uh, I, I, I surely uh, uh, thought about. But uh, each each product on this catalog uh, has actually these product details. So if we look at our domain right now with this product, we actually uh, try to represent this here. So we have a title, we have a, a, a price, we have a description. An SKU, I don't know if we, we need it, but we can surely add an SKU to it. Um, then the SKU would also have um, have a constraint that it should be unique. Uh, yep, will help for all to see a UI mockup. Yeah, indeed, yeah. Uh, that's, uh, that's actually uh, the same way that, uh, that I thought about that. It, it actually helps me a lot, because since I'm not an expert on eShops, I really don't know exactly, okay, what do I really need to build here? But uh, what we still have here is, for instance, we have a rating. So we don't have a rating on our product. Uh, we, have a, we don't have an SKU. Uh, the availability, I guess that's, that's a property that we could use, but this is a property that we could actually calculate. Or actually, we don't actually need to, to add this as a property, I guess, because it's something that if we need to, it, we just need to show if, if this is in stock or not. And probably this is an information that we would uh, maybe uh, take from, uh, from the inventory bounded context. Uh, but then we have the category. Uh, we already have a category. And then we have here, we see this, uh, for, in, in this case, we, we, we sell bags. So of course we have sizes here. So this concept of sizes, I, I also don't know exactly what we will want to uh, to actually sell on uh, on our eShop, but I guess I, I, it would be more familiar to me, like uh, selling uh, computer stuff or or, or hardware uh, uh, monitors, laptops, uh, uh, and uh, other things like that. So uh, I, I'm not sure if if we really um, need a size, but we'll we'll see. But there is then one other very important thing, which is the reviews. Because each product should have an, a list, basically, of, of reviews. So this is definitely something that we would uh, have to implement in, uh, in our front end. Sorry, uh, in, in, in our domain. So let's start here uh, one by one. First of all, we need a rating. So let's, let's add a rating here. Uh, let's add it uh, just just below the minimum or no above the available stock okay i did it just one too much because this these two properties we might move them actually later in in the inventory bounded context so we have a public int and uh, this would be um, the rating and actually we don't we don't want it to be an int Want it, we want it to be a double rating. Uh, and this would also be a very good opportunity for us when we implement validations here that we actually don't allow doubles that are uh, higher than five. That, that, that really depends on, on our uh, rating system. If we, want, uh, if we want to have one to five or one to 10 or uh, whatever else. But basically here we can then uh, surely I implement the fact that um, the ratings uh, can't be actually uh, can't be actually greater than uh, 
greater than uh, than five, I guess. And when you add the rating, you will always add the whole number, so it will be either one or two or three or four or five. But then when you when you calculate, you you would actually need you would actually need a service, I guess, for that, so that each time that somebody adds a rating. It actually modifies this property. And then in, in the database, it's, it's always the, the the newest version. Because rating is not something that we want to have like a history for it. Uh, but we still maybe uh, need the total number of... We still need the total number of ratings that were given, I guess. Uh, okay, so let's uh, let's instead add two different properties. Let's add public. What it, what would it be? Uh, it would be an int this one, and uh, number of ratings get private set. Uh, ratings are related with. Uh, Review description for for the buyers. It should be an object. Okay, uh, I don't know. I guess th this is not, not even a technical question. This is a more. Let me see here. I guess here in this review we just have the, the, the review, and I guess in most shops you, you you are able to to rate a product without without even providing a review. So for for a lot of shops you're you're not necessarily uh, or you you don't really need to to provide a review in, in order to give a rating and also in this mock-up that we have here it's it's not related to it at all uh, but yeah that, that's something that we could maybe change uh, based on our needs in the future i guess for now we we just leave the, the rating uh, at the product level i guess okay or should we go your, with your idea? Should we should should we have it as a review? Hmm. And that, that would be actually nice because we would have a list of reviews that would also uh, each review would would uh, actually uh, have a rating, and then you can just simply calculate it, or you can just calculate the, the average wherever you need it. Uh, on Amazon, you give a review together with uh, the rating, but for now, it is good like this. Yeah, I'm I'm very open right now. Your idea seems seems so uh, very attractive to me, so that that we can bind the the, the idea of rating to the review, that, that that we can that we can simply provide a, ra a rating without providing a review. Uh, that that's also maybe an incentive for for people who really want to to rate our product, that they would also maybe give us some feedback that, that we understand why they actually rated the product uh, the way they did so i guess it makes a lot of sense uh, in the end to have the rating bound to the idea of review so i guess i'll still go for for your idea thank you very much that was uh, that was a very very valuable uh, input i guess uh, so let's uh, let's just delete that and let's start working on the review in that case so the review would uh, belongs actually to to a product that's clear so it should also belong to this product uh, aggregate uh, so let's add a new class and let's call this uh, review of course let's uh, let's make it public now the only question is is the review an entity or a value object I guess we, we would need the ability to really identify or have a thread of continuity for each review. Because users might, might be uh, users might be might be able to actually change the review if they want, I guess. I don't know. That that could be a feature. Or I, I can see that as a feature. So in that case, I guess that the review would make sense to, to be an entity. I guess so. Uh, let's uh, let's create it as an entity. And if we come to the conclusion that uh, well, it should actually be a value object, and we will change that to value object, that shouldn't be a problem. 
Okay, so uh, just to, to implement the base class, we need a constructor. We need to pass in ID and we'll pass it to the base class. So for now, we are good. Let's, uh, I always like to add regions. Constructors properties. And uh, where here it should end. Okay. Uh, right now we don't know exactly what fields to do we need, but uh, we will come to that later. Okay. And then, uh, what what do we have on review? What do we have on on review? We actually have only some text here. But maybe I don't know. Maybe we'll add some some. We'll definitely have to, to add the, the, the rating to the review, so they uh, when they uh, s submit a review, they, there will be something like a form, and in that form, they would uh, actually then have to to provide or just to, 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 to choose the number of stars and also provide some feedback. And probably on the front end, we will bind the that together so that they cannot just send a, uh, send a review with, with just a rating. But we'll, we'll surely add the, the rating to, to the review right now. So in that case, in that case, so each review will have a rating and this rating would be a whole number because you, you either choose one star, two stars, three stars, four stars or five stars. So for now, I guess we, we don't want to play around with choosing half stars or things like that. So let's uh, have a public uh, int. Okay, and uh, how should how should we call this property? Uh, star count maybe. Get private set. Okay, and um, then we have a string. Text get private set. Okay, that would be the properties. Let's uh, let's create a factory for this. So it will be public uh, static uh, review. Uh, sorry, we should give also a name to the method. And uh, that should be it. So what uh, what do we need to create a review? Uh, we'll need the ID. ID. Uh, then we'll need the star count. And we'll need the string text. And we actually want to to make sure that we have all these. Um, uh, all these properly, uh, all these properties uh, properly set up. So we'll do some very, very, very basic validation right now. We'll we'll surely implement some some or just a little bit more sophisticated validation according to domain-driven design. But for now, uh, we can do some checks here, some very, very uh, simple checks, uh, and say that if ID. Uh, how is it? Is default? I guess the GUID. Uh, if ID equals uh, on the GUID class, uh, there is this empty property. So if we have an empty GUID, then we just uh, throw something right now. Argument exception would be suitable in this case. Once again, it's it's not really a best practice to to just throw exception uh, all around the code. Uh, that should be handled in a little bit more uh, elaborated way. It also doesn't have any performance drawbacks like like throwing errors has. But we will come to that uh, later in in our journey. So right now. Uh, okay, we have to, to define a message, I guess, also for this. Uh, to the GUID the review can't be empty or default value. Because in, uh, in our entity class, we have implemented 
also the possibility to, to have integers. Uh, but okay, and another check that we can make here, we say that if, mm, uh, here we will have to, uh, to concatenate some, some clauses. Uh, so if star count uh, is greater than five, or star count is less than um, one because we, we need to have at least one. Uh, in that case, throw new argument exception. And here we'll say um, star account should uh, be a uh, value between one and five. So it would be something like that. And then last but not least, if, uh, how is the string is null or empty, uh, text, then throw new argument uh, exception. And here, We'll say that uh, if your text can't be null or empty. So yeah, that uh, that should make it uh, for now. So in this case, we don't have any other uh, more validations to do. So in this case, I would just uh, take in the constructor also the other uh, part. So it would be a star count and a, sorry, this would be an integer in star count. A string a text and then we can just simply assign the properties here the ID we pass into the base class but then we set the star count uh, equals to star count and then we have the text equals the text that we get here so in this case what we can do here is just return a new review ID, star count and text of course so that that should be it for for this factory method it's, it's a very simple one uh, why throw exceptions I don't uh, like throw exceptions yeah I, I also said it, it's not really a good idea to throw exceptions we would definitely need uh, we'll, we'll definitely need to come up with a more sophisticated way to, to handle this uh, we'll probably uh, introduce some some concepts of uh, classes that represent operations or validations, and then we return some some validation result. But until we do that, I just want to create for now the basic layout of the domain, and we will build on top of that uh, afterward. But uh, you are totally right; it's not really a very good idea to throw exceptions all, all around the code. It's just something that we have right now uh, until we will come to this idea of validation. Because for validation, we'll, we'll implement some, some, some fancier stuff probably with, with specifications or validators or custom validators and things like that. And we'll always return some results. And then of course that the consumer of, of this domain based on the result or the validation result that it receives uh, will, will be actually able to, to decide what, uh, what to do next. But once again, I totally agree with you. It's not a very good thing to uh, to just throw exception uh, all over the place. So that's totally correct. Okay, so the next thing that we want to add here is some very, very basic behavior. So we said that for a review, as a user, you might, you might actually change your mind or you might or you realize that you, well, I uh, just wanted to, to add some more text that, 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 that you forgot something. So in that case, um, we should expose some behavior that would allow us to edit the star count or the text. So in that case, as we are fully uh, encapsulated, we expose this through public methods on each object. So we create for that a new region. Okay, that should be it. So first, uh, the first one would be a change star count. Let's uh, public, it would be void for now. Change star count. 
and you see this is uh, this is an example uh, in star count where we will have some duplicated code it's it's a very very small piece of code but this is one other reason why you are, are totally right that it's it's not a good idea to actually uh, throw exceptions because in this case we just have to duplicate this code instead we could just use a validator and uh, and do the validation and uh, return a result but this needs to be also uh, or th this needs to be done in, collab in, with, uh, in collaboration with the idea of domain event that would just trigger the event when when some validations go wrong for instance that uh, because other parts of the application other bounded contexts or other layers might be interested in in what the validation results actually are so once we validate something we, we just want to broadcast the information of what happened uh, to each consumer that, uh, that actually wants to know uh, whether a validation uh, is is okay or not so we'll we'll for sure implement this uh, at, at a later stage of, of our journey okay so here if once again this star count is is greater than five or less than one uh, for now we just throw an error uh, otherwise we just set a star count a star count and it would be equals um, sorry star star count and actually i think about one one other uh, property that we would have here i guess we also need to, uh, to add here some date created and last modified because we will we surely want to be able to to sort or filter uh, the the reviews based on dates, so that we maybe I don't know show the newer reviews first or the older reviews first, or whatever we choose to do in the front end. But I guess we really need this this option. So uh, okay, I have a poor internet and I can't watch. Uh, HT streaming so 1080 okay uh, that um, it's not uh, not optimal uh, could uh, all the other users if you're watching this uh, both on on uh, Twitch and on YouTube can you please confirm if if you could watch uh, this stream in uh, 1080 so uh, HT resolution because I stream in in 1080 I guess and. What I, from what I can see in, in the stream health, uh, it's actually fairly good. So I should be streaming 1080, I guess. So if, if you just, uh, just please let me know if you can watch this in, in 1080. Okay, so you passed here uh, some link to a GitHub uh, from uh, Horikov functional extensions oh, okay <laughs> I, I I think I work with that one it's it's actually nice uh, um, I think it's Valentin or Vladimir Korikov I, I don't recall exactly but uh, that, that's a great guy actually he, he has some trainings on pro site on domain driven design and of course I, I guess he he might be best known for for TDD test driven design and things like that or unit tests but uh, yeah he is definitely a very very good um, teacher and, and, and also coder, a uh, programmer. Okay, so let's also add the ability to modify uh, the text. Maybe I just want to add something more. So public void edit text. And we'll just take here a string and it would be, I don't know, new text or the updated text, whatever. Uh, here we'll also throw this one for now. But if this uh, doesn't have any problem, then uh, it's new text, of course. Okay, now that should work. And in that case, text will be equal new text. Uh, I use this package and uh, use cre uh, create class for static factory method result class. Okay, um, I, I'll take a look at, at that. Maybe we'll, we'll we'll implement that. I use usually on on the, the projects that I work, we we had our own implementations of uh, 
of factories and, and things like that. And results based on what type of operations you have. And, uh, but I'll, I'll definitely take a look at that. Thank you very, very much for, for mentioning it. And for the YouTube uh, watchers, because um, on Twitch we received here a, a, a GitHub link to to some class library that would help us with uh, operation results and, and factories. So if you if you are interested, just uh, I just pasted the link here in also uh, in the YouTube chat as well. So if if you just want to take a look, then uh, yeah, just uh, just uh, feel uh, feel free and and invited to 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 do to, to do just that. Okay. Uh, just let me check one other thing. Yeah. Okay. So let's uh, let's go back here to our review class and um, I thought I know uh, if you think that this is a poor idea then just let me know uh, don't be shy but I think that it makes sense uh, that we have some date times here so we have a date time um, and I guess we'll have to we'll have to uh, to create them as nullable and we'll show why uh, in just a few minutes I guess so it would be date uh, created so that we know when a review was created and then we have public uh, date time and that would be uh, last modified of course we just need to add a get and of course we need to add private setters we don't want to expose our setters at all that's the whole idea of encapsulation which is very very appreciated in domain driven design okay a semicolon is still missing and i guess that right now it should be it should be okay so the idea why i wanted to add uh, these uh, properties that nullable date times is because when you want to create a new review let's let's just assume that you don't actually uh, create it with information from a database it's maybe a brand new review uh, then it doesn't really makes or it doesn't really make a lot of sense to provide a date time or date created or last modified uh, because then this this uh, this factory should should be responsible for for setting uh, the, the proper times so this is why uh, we will add here the date time as nullable date uh, created and we'll add a default value of null to this one and exactly the same thing we will do uh, for the other one so it would be also date time nullable modified equals uh, null so this means that consumers uh, if they don't want to to uh, to give actually a, a date created or or a less modified date it means that it's probably not set uh, so far so in that case this class would be responsible to set those uh, to appropriate values so yeah let's um, Let's just um, let's just um, hmm. uh, then here. Actually, we won't return this right now. Var uh, review equals new review, and we'll do some some things here with uh, with date time. So those are are nullable. We say. So first of all, we have to check that if those if the properties are, are, are null, which means that date and uh, date created or last modified uh, are not set. And then if date created and last modified are also not provided here, so are also null, it means that we should clearly uh, generate a new date created and a new last modified. Uh, and then if we have here values, but then if those here are null, then we should just keep these values. So that's that's actually the, the the very simple logic that um, that we would have to to implement here. So what we could do, I guess, 
uh, just to also extend our fields here, I guess we should uh, create a private uh, new region. Private uh, metas. And that's actually a, a, a type of behavior that that we maybe might want. Uh, I don't know. Surely not right now, but if if the need emerges, then we will probably this is a good candidate for for becoming an extension method at a certain point, I guess, because this whole idea of setting the date created or or less modified, I guess that would apply to most or or, or most entities or, or value objects that that we have that that will have in our application but we will deal with that once we see that that we really uh need to to centralize just how how we set the, the date created and and last modified but for now let's just call it private um and just say uh for now it's void and let's call set um hmm. Date times. I don't know. It's not uh, the best. It's not the best. Um, not the best name, I guess. But I don't really uh, come up with a better idea right now. But uh, yeah, let's uh, let's see. So what do we actually want to do here? So uh, first of all, we have these properties already here. So this is not something that we would pass to this method. But what we need to pass to that method is actually uh, these two things here. And then we'll do the comparisons there. So we'll set the, we'll, we need a date time, a nullable date time for date created and a nullable date time for last modified in this private method. So we sent uh, from, from the factory uh, this, uh, these variables here to this private method and then we, we calculate how we want to set the times. So uh, we would have a date uh, time nullable uh, date created, and we have another date time that's also nullable, which is last modified. Okay, so uh, let's start with this uh, with this date time. Now there is also one one thing that we would have to uh, to take into consideration. And the thing is that if I don't have a date created, so if, if this date created uh, is null, then we can't have a last modified, of course. Uh, because what do we modify if, if, if uh, it was not created? So you see that this is, this is uh, another type of, of thing that, that, uh, that, we should, um, that we should take into consideration. So what do we do in the case that this state created is null and this last modified is actually not null? We, we just don't set it, I guess. Yeah, in that case, we, we leave the last modified here on, on null. We, we, we don't set the, the value. Okay, so let's, um, I don't know exactly how to to think about that but uh, if uh, let's let's start out with some some basic if uh, if blocks here so first of all if uh, date created uh, is null or equals null and how should it be date created not equals null. So if the date created is null, and but this one has a value, I know because this, that's actually that's actually the the normal case. Hmm. What would be the best way to pro to proceed here? What would be the best way to proceed? So let's so if the date created is not is is null, and the date created that we get here in this method is not null, so it's exactly this one. Uh, then we we just set the date created, I guess. Uh, 
And I guess this is this is uh, really a method that we would have to unit test. And maybe I, I don't know. I don't feel like writing unit tests today. But I guess next Monday we'll uh, we'll write some some unit tests because this is one that that I guess we will need to to have some. Uh, okay. So then we should uh, take in. We should actually check the same thing actually for for last modified. But then there's this option. I guess I guess here we'll we'll need to to implement some 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 more complex validation because there are a lot of rules that we would usually call in domain driven design invariants that would uh, that that would have to be on true because the last modified should also be less than date created or no sorry last modified should always be greater or equal than date created. So we cannot have a less modified that is less than date created. So this is just uh, another type of invariant that, that we would have to take care about that. Uh, but I guess that's, that's something that we'll, uh, that we'll implement probably also next Monday, because in order to do that, I just want to, 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 to do some more research about well, uh, what would be the, the best way to, to do that actually. So until then, because we want to, to have a functional uh, uh, timings here. So we would add here, I would say that if uh, last modified equals null and uh, last modified uh, not equals null, I guess we can just concatenate another end and we say that here uh, the last modified uh, should be but in that case what should what should we actually compare I guess we should compare those two so this shouldn't be uh, less than this one so and last modified. So it it should be uh, it should be greater. So it would be greater or equal uh, to date created. In that case, we just uh, set the last modified. So this would be, I guess, the the very standard uh, way of of setting those. But I guess then here we, we also need to make a check here. And we also have to make sure, but if we make this check here, then it doesn't really make sense to make it here once, once again. Or I guess it does. Because then we we shouldn't be able to set the, the date created. Although, no, because the, the date created we, we can just set. That, that's the, the creation of the date, but the, the rule about it's it, it's about the last modified. So I guess no, I guess it's it's okay right now. I would say we also have an error, and I'm not sure exactly where. Probably I forgot a comma or a semicolon somewhere. Uh, where do we actually have it? Ah, of course the factory, because we don't return that. So let's just. Uh, To, to just not have the, the red squiggly line. I hate them. So, coming back to this one. Uh, okay, so we have here the very, very standard case. But then uh, we have to take into consideration, for instance, uh, if the date created has a value. So if date created is not null, but then you get here also a date created. I guess that's that's uh, that's something that that you we would have to evaluate. So in that case, uh, what would this rule be? It would be date uh, if date created is not equal null. But if if we also have a date created, this is kind of like a. a, a or read only so you just set it once 
So you just set it if, if it is at some point on null, but if it already has a value, then you just don't set it at all, I guess. And last modified, you don't set it here. I'm having network issues. Okay. So right now I'm starting to think that something is not, not optimal with my stream. Uh, could somebody uh, of you on YouTube maybe uh, tell me if if you can see this, uh, this stream in 1080 and without buffering? Because I, I get some reports from Twitch users that, that they can't actually view uh, the, the stream correctly. So let me... Let me just check again the stream quality here. I'm actually streaming at 1080 with 60 frames per second. So that should, uh, that should be okay. And I also see here, both on Twitch and on YouTube, that my stream quality is actually good. So it's green, at least what I see, I don't know. Let me maybe, I don't know, briefly try to check that. Now, and actually, I'm I'm able to see this stream at uh, at 1080, and I also don't see buffering. So actually, it seems it seems to work now. It just seems to work, I guess, for me at least, of course, um, because I can see it at 1080. on Twitch. Once again, it's snow buffering at all. So I don't know, I guess theoretically they, they tell me that the stream is okay. It's my network, no problem with the stream. Yeah, but uh, you were the second person that uh, that, that was saying that so yeah that was uh, that is why I uh, okay and on YouTube I see here from Daniel 1080 works fine okay thank you very much for for your feedback uh, thank you very much for for your feedback okay so uh, let's 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 go back to this one so I guess that in the set date times uh, actually the only things that we have to set right now is is this one and I'm sure that, I don't know, uh, when we'll implement the, the unit test for, for this one, I guess that... Uh, when we'll implement the unit test for this one, I guess we will come up maybe with, with different type of, of scenarios and then we'll see how, how we'll, we'll be able to, to handle them. But I guess for now, for now that would be actually, uh, that, that should be okay. So here uh, we just call set Ah, we just, uh, we have to... Yeah, because it, it's not, it's not, it, it is not a static one. Uh, so yeah, but we can then say review.set set date times. And then we can say here, uh, the date created and last modified. So right now we, we set the the appropriate date. Uh, however, I guess that the only thing that we still... So I think that the most important thing is that if the date created is null, so the property, and if the incoming parameter is also null, 
then we just have to create a new date. Okay, so in that case, we'll just add for now here another if uh, date created equals null and date created uh, equals null. So if both of them are null, then in that case, uh, date created uh, equals new uh, date time dot UTC now. Why is ah, it's not new? Sorry, date time dot UTC now. I just I just like to to set all the dates in the database to UTC, and then we'll probably have some some services in 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 the application layer of the application that will actually do uh, do time conversions from what we have in the database uh, to the time zones of, of the users of, of the app. So yeah, that's why in the database, I, I just like to always store uh, UTC times. And yeah, I'm, I'm aware with all the, the problems with, with working with date times. I worked for three years, I guess, uh, on, on an entire ecosystem of applications for call centers. Uh, where uh, you work a lot with with uh, with date times. So when does a call start? When does it? When does a call end? And uh, when does a shift start for an agent? One. When, when does a shift end? And things like that. And uh, well, it, it, it's really messy to to work with date times. John Skid has a lot of articles about that. Of course, he has also his his own library, Noda Time, which I actually usually use uh, in. In, in, in apps but right now I guess it won't it would be just a little bit uh, too much for now uh, but the idea is that uh, yeah of course it's more complicated than that and we should add different other type of information when we store a daytime not just the daytime that we have here in C sharp but for now I guess it, it it's just okay so if if we will need uh, in the future some some more advanced scenarios with with daytimes then we'll think about how uh, how, how to handle them in, uh, at that point, if if using the, the date times that we have in C sharp is enough, or if we need to, yeah, uh, use like the Noda time library that was written by by John Skid. So yeah, in this case, we just set uh, this date created to uh, date time UTC now, and I guess. A similar thing we would have to create here for the last modified because it's exactly the same scenario if the last modified uh, is null and uh, the parameter that we get is uh, also null so if both of, of them are null um, In that case, I guess. In that case, we just uh, we just also don't need to take care about this condition anymore, because we just generate here this uh, uh, this last modified. And since we generate the date created first and then the last modified, that, that shouldn't be a problem. So in that case, it would be the last modified would be equals to date time uh, UTC now. So that that should do it. Okay, so then what is important, however, with, with this last modified is that whenever we do some changes here, like change the star count, we also change the last modified uh, equals uh, date time dot uh, UTC now. And then we also have to do this here equals date time dot UTC now okay so now now we handle also this correct um, date time labels and yeah I, I, I guess it for a review for this concept of review I guess that uh, that's actually all we need I, I don't know if we if we need something else if you have any ideas what we should add to to this idea of, of a review then just feel feel invited uh, to, to just let me know but I guess for now we have the factories we have some behavior so okay 
so we have also this private set time center here yeah. i guess that that should that should be okay for the review so now we have to go to the product and this if if you watch my other streams when i was built or when i was working uh, of my proof of concept for for a social network uh we actually had this this idea or or we work with with, with this this type of information because uh, let me let me uh just explain what i mean here so uh, of course a product would need to have a collection we could say it would be an i collection we could even use an an i enumerable but we'll have an i collection of review okay uh, and then we have get a private set uh, okay private uh, set okay what is the problem with you uh, okay what uh, what of course i have to give a name i have to give a name reviews get private set of course now the reason why we actually use an i collection here and not for instance a list so we could theoretically use a list but the big problem with this is that uh, you have a private setter uh, you have a private setter that's correct what does this actually mean it means that if uh, i am a consumer of this class uh, i just add it here uh, as a comment but again let's imagine that i am right now a consumer of this uh, of this product class okay so what i want to be able to do since this uh, has a private setter so let's maybe i, I don't know let's uh, var uh, product equals product.create because we would have a factory method whatever I, I don't write everything so we will have here a product now since we have these reviews with the private setter what we want to be able to do is something like product uh, dot reviews equals new list of review so this is something that our private setter prevents so we just can't assign a new list to it however the big problem is that even if i'm the consumer if this property is of type list i can simply say product dot reviews dot add and since i want to encapsulate the whole idea of uh, of handling reviews in the review itself or in the product itself uh, just allowing a consumer to add reviews to my list is a very very bad idea because uh, here okay the, the private setter helps uh, in a way but uh, it's still for for consumers they, they can still manipulate your list here so this is something that we would of course like to avoid so this is why uh, what we usually do is uh, expose this as an i collection or usually just exposes uh, expose this as an interface we can use we could use even the i uh, enumerable but let's let's use the i collection because we might want to execute i don't know uh, queries that are specifics for for collections here and then the whole idea is okay but how do we actually uh, give the option to add reviews to uh, to this product so what we will do here is we will expose this as a private field and uh, let me just uh, just show it would be private and the field would be a list uh, sorry list of uh, review and it would be uh, reviews okay and here uh, instead of having this get and set we'll actually uh, let me just uh, do this like that so we will have a get return reviews and we actually don't need the setter at all so what we will do here instead is we'll add behavior to the class we remember we are in domain driven design so this means that we want to have a rich domain model so we need to expose behavior guys so in that case we would have here a public uh, for now we are returning void add review to product now here we would take in a review 
and then we would just be able to add this to our field our reviews dot add and here uh, we would add a review okay now if you ask yourself don't we actually need to validate this uh, hello Rushab. thank you for for joining again so coming back to this whole idea uh, the review itself do we need to validate it let's see what do you think do we need to, to validate the review that, that that we take in here as as an incoming parameter to this method i'm curious about what you're saying so do we need to validate it or or don't we need to do that and of course why So what's um what's your opinion on that? Let's see, who will answer first? My YouTube followers or my Twitch followers? Let's see. So the question is, do we need to validate this review that that, that we get here? What do what do you think? Don't be shy guys, it's just a 50-50 chance and it's, it's not a very difficult one. It, it's, it's not a question or, or good or wrong, it's just a question of thinking about how we just want to do things. And to see if, uh, if domain driven design could, could maybe yeah, uh, bring us some, some, some benefits. So, any ideas? I guess I'll wait for a few more seconds and see what um, what we get here as a feedback. So unfortunately, no, not. What was the question? So the question is here in this add review to product. So we just want to add the review to our private list and that we expose this through this property, which is of type I collection. So the question is, should we do any validation of this review that, that we get here as an incoming uh, parameter? So that was actually the, the question. If we need to validate it or not. Let's um, let's look for an answer in our review class. So in our review class, we see that uh, the only way that as, as a consumer, the only way that you create a review, validation should be on repository level. Uh, no, not according to domain-driven design. According to domain-driven design, uh, each aggregate uh, should uh, make sure that it is always on a consistent state. So this means that each time you want to make a change to an aggregate, you have to validate at the domain level if that change puts the aggregate on an invalid state or not. So uh, according to domain driven design validation is not something that, that you do just in your repositories, but it's something that is built in uh, to your domain because it is actually part of your business logic itself. Uh, so, but the idea is that uh, if we if we look at this class, the way we design this class, right now the only way that a consumer can generate a review is by using the factory method. Now, the factory method right now, what it does, well, it validates the inputs. So this means that if you create a review, in order to really get it, so to, to get an, a review object, you need to pass in the core, the, 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 the appropriate parameters to this factory method, which means that actually the validation for the review is done by the review itself. Uh, single responsibility. So I think you are violating the single responsibility uh, principle when you put uh, so many functionality to one entity. Uh, no, why? Actually, according to, to Eric Evans and also Von Vernon and a lot of other TDD, uh, 
it, it, it's it, it's exactly the opposite. You should add as much uh, behavior um, to to entities and and value objects. So let, let's let's think this here. I think that you are violating the single responsibility principle when you put so many functionality to one entity. No, I, I really don't see how this violates the single responsibility principle. Because what 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 does the single responsibility principle say actually? It it essentially says that an object it should have a, only one reason for change. And here, no matter uh, how we look at it, the only reason for change is when we want to change something at the object itself. So I'm I'm not sure what uh, what's What's the problem with uh, with the single with the single responsibility here? So I really would be grateful if, if you could explain. Okay, uh, it would be uh, much better um, if you put majority of your business logic in value objects. Uh, no, but this is also something that I that I don't agree with. Uh, so it 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 really it, it's not about what type of behavior or how much behavior you have. Uh, the distinction between entities and value objects is very clear. We use entities when we need a thread of continuity and identity for, for, for a certain object. So this means that, that that object should be identifiable only through its uh, identifier, while value objects are only objects that are defined by their respective values or attributes or properties. Uh, in this case, sure, we, we can discuss if, if, if a review should be an entity or, 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 or if it should be a value object. But the discussion or the decision whether it should be a, a value object or an entity has actually nothing to do with the type of, uh, of, of behavior that, that we have here. So, I don't know. But I tend to not agree with that. Okay, so coming back to this idea uh, is that when we are here in this product, it means that when we get here a review, so as long as it is not null, it means that it is a valid one. Because it means that it has passed all the validations that we did in the factory method. So it means that we have a valid review. So this is why we don't actually need to check the validation here because the review itself takes care of, of, uh, of the validation. So we just uh, add the review to, to this list. Um, of course, we can just pass here. Uh, maybe we should just guard against null if uh, review. Uh, but here we, over, we did overwrite the... We did overwrite the... Uh, equals equals and not equals operator so what we need here is we would have to do it like that so if uh, review is null so we basically negate that so only in that case we would uh, add the review to the list in any other circumstances we actually won't do anything here at all of course, we would have to just uh, implement the same kind of thing for removing a review. Because we might also want to, to delete reviews at, at some points. Remove um, review from product. And then I guess here, since this is an entity, I guess that the only thing that we actually need here is GUID. Uh, Review ID, and in that case, what we could do is for to remove equals reviews dot find and review ID. Okay, uh, okay, because this one, I guess it finds uh, this this. Uh, this find works only with find matches the conditions defined by the specified predicate and returns the okay 
But I thought the file was after the ID, so it would be then uh, review.id equals review ID. But in that case, we could even use the first or default. Okay, so searches for an element that matches the condition defined by the specified predicate and returns the first occurrence with within the entire list of t. So it returns the first element according to the conditions, otherwise the default value. Okay. Yeah, lambda expression. Yeah, that's uh, that's what we actually did here in the end. Um, I thought it would be able to just look for for the ID. This is if if I recall correctly, there should be a method on list uh, that allows you just to search after the ID for for it or something like that. Um, okay, so what we can do here is then say that if uh, review or to remove, it's the same thing that we did earlier. To remove is null. So in that case, we will just remove it. Okay. So this is how we actually will be able to add review or remove reviews uh, from a product through uh, this uh, correspondent public method. And in this case, nothing here is, or, or consumers can't just simply uh, uh, add reviews to this list. They need necessarily to use these methods. And the reason why, uh, why we want to do it like that is that uh, if we want to do some more, more complex validation here, or to decide if we if you really want to add or remove a, a review, uh, maybe I don't know uh, based on the, the text or something like that, we could add all that type of behavior here. So the the logic based on which we um, we decide if if it's possible to add a review or not. But for now, we just we just add the review as long as it is not null, and we remove it as long as as we found it there. Okay, so uh, that's about the review. And then we have also implemented here this list of reviews. Uh, on the review, we have that... Um, on the review, we, we have that, uh, that rating, I guess. And I think right now... I think right now what we need actually to do here is because we have here the star count for each review. I guess we should, um, yeah. I guess on uh, on the product itself. Uh, we should. I guess we should still have a rating average public, and that would be double rating uh, average. Get private set. Okay. So, and here this this rating average. This will even be something that that we that we want that we will exclude from the database because this is a property that we can totally calculate uh, based on this uh, on this I collection here. Uh, and I say that we put this rating average, I guess that uh, uh, would make sense from, uh, in my point of view, from just a, a logical point of view, because you will calculate the, the, the ratings average based on the reviews that, we, that, that you actually have there. So in that case, where we should do that is actually in, in the factory. We, 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 we have, however, to implement the factory. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's do just that. Public uh, static uh, product because we are on the product right now. Uh, create. Okay, and now uh, I, that would be a little bit more complicated because we have to uh, to take a look here and uh, well try to decide which of these properties are mandatory and which are not mandatory. Of course, this is 
again one aspect that the domain expert would tell us so the domain expert would tell us that, that the name is mandatory description is mandatory price whatever um, so right now we just we just have to decide ourselves I guess so I would say that each product it does need it, it, it needs to to have a name um, I don't know if I mean it should also have a description it should also have a price that is higher than zero and it's non-negative that's an important thing to note uh, photo URL is not something that we really need if it can be maybe that, that we don't want to display photos for for a product available stock and minimum stock threshold um, these are properties that uh, it, it actually doesn't have anything to do with the idea of product uh, in in this catalog this would have to do with with products in the inventory bounded context hmm or I guess we should have minimal information about how many products we actually have hmm yeah let's let's keep the the available stock but let's just remove the minimum stock threshold because that belongs to the business logic of the the inventory bounded context to know when uh, a certain product needs uh, needs uh, maybe to be reordered from from the supplier so that's not something that that the product in in our catalog bounded context would uh, would have to take care of uh, so yeah in that case I have this uh, this available stock. I would say that, um, that that would also be a mandatory information, I guess. So we we just need to provide it. We we, we need to know how, how many products we actually have there. So then we have a category, and I guess it's each product should belong to a category. So we have a category and the category and, and has then also a, a collection of subcategories. But in this case, hmm, I'm thinking about, but this is I guess also something that uh, not how we should think about in terms of domain driven design, because it's more it's more concerned about on, on, on the database layer, on the DAL layer. If um, the question is actually, do we need here the entire category or do we just need the ID of, of the uh, category? I guess that's, uh, that's, uh, that, that's the question that, that we would have here. Hmm. I guess we would just have the entire category here. And also has subcategories. And we'll we'll have to see how we'll implement this in the database. But for now, I guess it would make sense just to have the entire category here, not only the ID. Um, and of course, those of you who work with with any framework core would say that uh, would say to me that. Uh, According to the conventions, we should also add a property that is called something like a category ID. But uh, uh, as the theory says in the domain driven design, when we design the model, the domain model, we shouldn't or we shouldn't get distracted from any other concerns. Uh, no need for that. Yeah, I, I, I say that that is no need, but usually when, when you look in, in the uh, entity framework core uh, getting started guides, would also uh, you would also or you would always say something like that you know but uh, I totally agree that this is not necessarily needed and this is also not something that we should take care about uh, when we design our model we just need to, to, to keep in mind or be focused on what or how this domain model should behave not how we will persist it uh, in into into the, the database yes of course the category id is generated uh no <coughs> <coughs> sorry uh here in this case not 
And the reason why is that uh, because we have a geo ID here. If we would have an ID here, that uh, it, it, it would be generated by the database. But in this case, it's, um, or I think, no, the ints are generated by the database itself. The GUIDs are generated, I guess, by Entity Framework, by, by, by the OR, ORM itself. So I guess that the IDs are, are generated by, by Entity Framework directly, while the IDs are generated by, by the database. I, I'm, I'm not sure though, so if, if you know this better, then uh, just uh, EF does it, okay. So I guess, uh, I, I, I guess it was uh, why I uh, anticipated. Okay, so we actually uh, see that all the properties that we have here uh, is name, description, price. Actually, everything is is required except this i collection of reviews. This is also not, it could be that the, if if you created the the, pro, the product for the first time, you don't have a list there. Uh, hi, I think uh, the twenty four product return type read only connection line twenty four. Uh, yes, that's that's actually correct. It's a well read-only property. You you could make it also a, 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 as a read-only collection, um, as a type. But uh, well, you you could surely uh, explain me. Uh, but I I'm not aware why I should uh, read. Uh, I'm not sure why we should uh, use this instead of, uh, I don't know, this. Actually, in, in all the, the projects that I work with, we mostly work with, uh, with collections because of encapsulation. But no, this is fully, uh, this is right now fully encapsulated. You, you cannot you cannot change it. You cannot add items. This is fully, uh, fully encapsulated. The only way that you can actually add or remove items, or in in some in some way, uh, interact with this, is by using these public methods that, that that we expose here. So um, it is fully encapsulated. I read only collection. Okay. So you want to use this interface instead. Hey, that's a... That's something that, uh, that, that I should maybe... To be honest, I, I, I never really... Um, try to understand the difference between the read-only collection and the, the, the normal collection. Because from my point of view right now, if we have an I, I read-only collection or I collection from encapsulation perspective because of the way that we designed this class this is still fully encapsulated so yeah okay let's um let's go back to this one so what we would need here is uh product create we would need uh of course the id we would need uh the name we will need a uh, decimal, the price. Okay, uh, but of course we should. Uh, those should be with lowercase, of course. That also. Okay, then what? Uh, the photo URL is something that we don't need, so we leave it at the end, so we can provide a default null value. Uh, then we have this uh, int. available stock uh, this is something that we that we need uh, we need a category because we want to have a category and then we would have two uh, we will have actually the photo URL and this uh, actually list of, of review that could be actually 
that could be actually null for instance if you, if you don't have any reviews for now uh, so yeah let's um, let's go on a different line and let's say string and uh, it would be a photo URL uh, equals null so if the consumer doesn't want to provide a photo URL uh, the consumer is free to not provide it at all so we are we're not setting any any boundaries there and then uh, we would have here I uh, would have to get a list uh, of um, review uh, which could also be null so when we will uh, do some things here uh, once again we we will throw some errors when we try to simply validate some some values here but uh, we'll, we'll come to implement uh, just or a slightly more sophisticated way to, to do validations probably in, in, in the coming weeks. So what we'll do first if um, id uh, equals goid dot uh, empty, then throw new argument exception. Okay. Private read on a list. Okay. Yeah, okay. So you uh, you wrote here something private read only list of uh, enrollment enrollments equals new enrollment yeah, okay and then you have the enroll on I read, read only list of enrollment and then you just return the exact same field into to list I fully agree that it's, it's correct what, what you say here, but I, what, I, what, what I don't get it, so um, I don't know, why should we use uh, your proposal instead of what we have right now? Because the argument with, with encapsulation is, is not working right now, because we have a fully uh, encapsulated collection of reviews. So the only way that you can actually uh, work with these reviews is through this public method. Okay. Yeah. That feels un unnecessary. I don't know. But again, right now, we don't think about how do we map this to the database. This is something that I always uh, say and emphasize when we try to 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 design our our domain model according to domain driven design principles we really shouldn't get distracted at all about what we will do in the database layer so how we will persist this uh, will actually uh, be so we'll think about it once we implement the data access layer for this bounded context right now i just don't want to get distracted at all on how we just want to, to map this. And uh, by the way, in Entity Framework Core uh, 3.1, uh, backing fields or mapping to backing fields is the default. So it, it actually, if it sees a field that has the same name or that follows this convention like here and here, it will also always actually use for the mapping uh, the field. And here this field shouldn't be read only because you should be able to add things to this field and then persist them back to the database but once again this is a concern that we right now we shouldn't get distracted with right now we should just care about the behavior of our domain that's all like our domain would be a, in total isolation in comparison to all other layers of of the application 
So yeah, that's um, that's what I'm basically trying to do here. Okay, so let's let's go let's go back to this one. Um, so we have here this. Uh, just let me go here. Okay, so what do we actually need here? We need to say that um, actually this validation we should do, I guess, at, at the, the entity level. Because it, it doesn't make sense that we always need to, to validate things like that. Although we validated the, the ID. Hmm. Uh, I, I'll think about that till next Monday, I guess. Uh, Good uh, cannot be empty or default value. Then, um, yeah, let's see the, the only validation for now, again, for now, because I think, I, I think maybe it's important, maybe next Monday that, that we will go and, and, and implement some, some proper validation here, because for instance, here we would, uh, maybe for the names, we would want to do different type of validations. Like, is it null? Is it empty? Uh, it shouldn't be more than 15 characters. It shouldn't be less than five characters, whatever. Uh, these type of validations are part of the business logic. So according to domain-driven design, this should be part of your domain model. Uh, so yeah, this is why I guess we'll, we'll actually start to work on validations pretty soon. So, but till, not, till then, we'll just say a uh, string uh, is null or empty. And here we say name. Okay, in that case, throw new argument exception. Name cannot be null or empty. And the price here for the price, there are some some other type of validations that that uh, that we want to do here, and that would be. Actually, I guess since since we have several types of validation that, that we want to do for the price, actually we we just want to check that if uh, that that the price shouldn't be actually a great greater than zero, so it should be a positive. And um, actually, that's 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 the only check that we have to make. Uh, if uh, decimal sorry not decimal sorry if a uh, price uh, is less than I don't know how it, it could actually be a zero uh, or if something like 50 cents or five cents that would be 0 0.05 or something like that so we should say that the price so it the price should of course be uh, greater than uh, zero this means that if we have 0 0.0001 then uh, it, it, sh it should be okay so in that case but uh, here we, we just want to validate so if the price is less than zero or less than or uh, equal to zero uh, in that case throw new with exception Price can't be less. Sorry for the typo. Can't uh, be less than or equal to zero. Then uh, the available stock. I guess here uh, the only validation is that the available stock should be should be a positive number because you could have the available stock set on zero. And this means that you actually don't have uh, any of those products in, in the inventory. So here would say if uh, available stock uh, is less than zero. So we just check that it is a negative one. Uh, in that case, throw new argument exception, sorry. Then available stock should be positive number okay 
and then category a category uh, it actually should validate itself when when you create it so this is not something that we have to take care of a photo url is null and um yeah the list of review is is also it could be null but in this case the thing that we would like to do here is um let, let's for now just create a new product for uh, product uh, equals sorry for should it should be lowercase equals new product and then i guess we in the constructor we just have to specify the id because for all the others we just want to, to validate them and since we'll add custom validators uh, later probably next week now this is some logic that i want to keep here in the factory not in the constructor and then uh we should pass in the id so we would have a new product so what we'll do then is then uh, product.name but here there is a typo so product.name equals name product.price equals uh, price okay what we have available stock product.available stock equals uh, available stock i know we we could have used also an object initializer and here i see a question here should uh, shouldn't available stock be allowed to be zero uh, yeah it should but i was thinking that uh, the way uh, the available stock yeah uh, will throw only if it's less than zero so if it will be exact zero then it won't throw so i guess it's it's exactly what you say that it it should be allowed to have zero the only thing that where we don't allow zero is the price because the price should be at least one cent or something like that so a price can't be simply zero i guess I don't know. Yeah, no problem. It's I, I'm really happy uh, when you ask questions. It's because th there are a lot of occasions in in which I'm totally wrong. So I, I'm really grateful to all of you who who get uh, engaged here and 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 write things in the chat. It's it's really very very important for me. Okay, so we have the available stock here and then we have the category that we can set. Product.category equals um, category. And then we have this null. I guess for, for the photo URL, we can just set it. it uh, we don't really care if it's null or if it has a value. Uh, Product.photo uh, URL uh, equals photo url but then uh, this reviews we have to set this to this field reviews so it would be something like that product reviews would be equal to and here i guess we can say uh, reviews and we can use this null call sync operator and say that uh, if it is null, then we just have a new list of review. An empty list. So in this case, we'll make sure that this, this will never be null. Uh, we can just also return the product. But then, I guess another property that we would need on this product would be that it has also to do with, with the reviews and that would be public it would be int number of reviews that would be also via that, that would be a very important information um that that front ends might, might need to use or, or or other layers of the application so we need to know how many reviews but if we have this collection then we can just count on it so is it necessary that, that we add a property for that i don't know um we don't need it right now so following this the you ain't gonna need it principle we we just don't put it right now because we don't need it in in this moment if we come to the conclusion later that, that we need to have a property that holds the total number of reviews 
then we'll simply add that and it would simply return this reviews.count. But for now, I guess it's um, it's okay like that. So yeah, I guess that uh, right now we have a very, very basic product. The only thing that we still need to add to this product are methods to edit the product. So we'll have to expose public methods like uh, change name, uh, change na name, uh, modify description, uh, update price, uh, add or uh, update photo URL, and uh, and other things like that. Uh, also, the, the category will be we should be able to, to switch the category for a product at a certain point. Uh, as admins, we might just simply want to well to move a product for from one category to the other. So we should be able to actually do that. Uh, so we will need to actually expose uh, methods, public methods, to uh, work uh, with all this type of, of information since all of them have private setters. So we have to expose them uh, through, through methods like just like we have here for add uh, review to product or remove review from product. But I guess that um, that's maybe something that we will uh, leave for next time because from a logical point of view I think that that the next step that we should actually do because we have some a lot of validation like this I guess we should uh, we should uh, try to implement some some proper validation so I, I'll also do some some research till till next Monday and try to well to see what uh, or uh, how actually validation should be performed uh, to be uh, in uh, in adherence to the domain driven design principles that, that I really want to to follow here so yeah yeah I guess I guess that's it then for for today so we'll continue next Monday to work on this product to implement validation and uh, then we'll uh, we'll add the, the methods for for this product and uh, then we'll then I guess we'll have this product uh, aggregate ready. And if it means that if we have this product aggregate ready, I guess then we'll be able as a next step to implement the data access layer part for it. Now that, that would be something very nice. Although I think that before the data access layer, I think we should think about implementing domain events first. Because actually the domain models, now actually this domain driven design uh, principles and patterns are actually a very behavior driven or event driven because every time something happens like the name updated or a new review was added or things like that we should fire up events and in all the layers of the application we'll have uh, actually other classes that will listen to these events and uh, well do some stuff based on, 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 on the events so domain events are really a core part of what uh, domain driven design uh, should be so yeah i guess that's, that's the logical um proceedings for for this application so uh, implementing val uh, validation so to take control of what in domain driven design is called as invariants things like that things that must be true let's say uh then we'll implement uh, the idea of domain events and every time uh, every time something happens here uh we just now raise an event and then, well, consumers or other parts of the application should decide uh, whether they want to listen to those events or not. Uh, and then implement the data access layer for uh, this, this product. Um, and maybe some time in between we'll implement a new bounded context for identity. So that, that we will be able to have users that can log in and things like that. But that's, uh, that's a discussion for, for another part. Okay, guys, uh, then I just want to thank you very, very much for being here, for getting involved in the chat. It was really, really uh, very important for me. Uh, as, as you saw, I, I'm not sure if you, if you were here from the beginning, that there were some ideas uh, that, uh, that I actually uh, uh, used. Uh, there were some, some ideas that, uh, that I didn't uh, agree with, but uh, these streams are also uh, a place uh, to discuss things. Uh, things are not always black and white in, in software development, so it's 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 often also a question of, of the context, I guess. So yeah, uh, you're welcome. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, if you just want to join, the next stream is on Wednesday when 
I'll continue to work on the social network project. Basically, I have uh, I, I have two projects that that I'm working on uh, during live streams. On Mondays, I'm doing this eShop, and on Wednesday, the same hour, I'm doing a social media app. So yeah, I hope to see you there once again. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, I wish you a very good night or good day or good morning, depending where you are. And stay safe and uh, hope to see you here the next time. So bye.